What is up, Alphas? Today we are here with Elva and Mark from Rhinus Leatherworks, and we've got a really, really fun interview today. Oh, because they've got a super cool camera that look, it's like, I feel like it's like an eagle eye. It's like looking around their, their studio, which is also their super cool streaming workshop. So they've got a lot of stuff going on, but do you guys want to share a little bit about what you sell? Uh, yeah, we sell a lot of, most of our things are leather items that are made for geeks by geeks. So one of the things that we learned was to niche down. Um, and that, that is where we landed. And that is where we found out we played a lot with different things and we niched down to do geek works for geek works, um, including some of the armor that you see behind us. Um, our goal is to have things of, um, that you would find at a Ren fair, basically, or that you would have or need at a tabletop gaming um, like area or that you would need for the game itself, um, like uh, dice trays, um, dice bags, little things like that, um, all made really high quality and all by hand by us. Everything that you could use to play a role-playing game and immerse yourself in a role-playing game, really. Awesome. Right. Yeah, we and I noticed that you're... Um, that your cat dice trays, like I, at least in your reviews, it's such a, it's such an interesting because you know when you think about tabletop gaming, you, I, I think that this is something that someone who's not in this niche, which Mark and I are, they wouldn't like think that oh the kitty the kitty dice tray is going to be the thing that takes off. But I was looking at your views and everybody loves the kitty, and I'm like yeah that yeah. makes sense that makes complete sense. <laughs> <laughs> so um you oh. Do you guys had a um, pretty cool thing happen to you a couple, what, was it last year that you Three were? A year and a half ago, I think it was. Yeah, because it had to have been way earlier for you than what everybody got to actually right see it. So yeah. do you want to share with the alphas what that absolutely bonkers thing that happened to you was? <laughs> uh, Sure. Yeah. So our bonkers moment was that our armor, which is similar to the one that you see behind us, was featured in Lucifer season five finale. Um, one of the main characters for that season and the main actor got to war things that we uh, created here. And I have to say that it, it was amazing, first of all. And we also get to say that we tried it on first before <laughs> we sent it. So he got to wear what we were <laughs> wearing. So the pictures that you see on um, our Etsy are pictures of uh, Mark and myself wearing it for our Etsy. So that's the actual product that we sent to the show on Lucifer on for Netflix. Yeah. Oh, that's that's so cool. awesome. I'll, uh, I'll make sure to like flash a photo up on the screen for everybody so they can see it. That is so cool. Well, I was going to ask you um, what your like proudest business accomplishment was but that seems to be one that's probably up there so do you have any others though that outshine that that moment for you not yet not yet <laughs> um, i mean there's, there's a lot of little milestones um we say around here um you celebrate every victory right because building awesome. a business isn't isn't one one goal and then you're done it's you know it's it's being able to take all those little milestones and celebrate everything that's one goal but um our end goal was for mark to be able to get into movies and things so we've actually started to make connections with uh people working in, in um los angeles and like agencies and different things um they're starting to guide us on how to do things because we got Ooh. on lucifer so we're hoping to be able to build a lot more in the future, not just what we did for Lucifer. And you can see our Corgi in the background. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually very active in our streams. Um, so he he knows he's allowed in here. So you'll see him walking in and out when we're streaming. He's your Bubbers. Bubbers yes. is always. <laughs> yes. Bubbers has turned into Spokes Kitty. Um, yep. So that's really interesting. And I think that that's one thing that, I hear this a lot when you get one big like breakthrough feature. And I think it's that way for like even actors getting roles. Like you got to have your breakthrough role 
And then you have that little piece of notoriety that you can use as a, hey, we've already done this. Would you like us to contribute to this project? Do you mm -hmm. feel like that's like having that cool badge of authority has allowed you to be able to reach out to these other potential Yes, absolutely. We're able to say things like, um, well, we've done this. And then they go, oh, so you already have some sort of foot in the door. You have, you're building, um, what is it? you're building an album that you can show to potential clients or, if, and then they tell us how to keep going or they're helping us like do the next steps. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely, um, it's not the end all by any means, but it's definitely a, a step in the right direction. Yeah, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, awesome. and you know the funny thing is, I'm I'm sorry. The funny thing is that um, I wanted to throw this in there is that I wanted to thank you you guys for the handmade alphas because part of the reason why we were able and ready to do such a thing was because of the alphas. Um, we I so when we started to do this as a business, Mark was a wildland firefighter and he was away from home a lot, and we. Uh, decided that there wasn't the lifestyle that we wanted and he we turned this into a business and I searched and searched um and I, I'm I picked a, this up as a hobby and yes. then we turned it into a business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's how it starts um, right <laughs> yes and we searched um like who could guide us who can help us and it was so you know I would watch videos especially on YouTube and there was a lot of big promises and a lot of you know Things that didn't seem realistic and then watching Starla and Mark you guys um your videos there it was realistic I felt like you know you guys did tell us it's a hustle you'll get it keep going you know I felt like you taught us to celebrate those small victories um taught us about niching down about you know it doesn't have to be perfect just get started do it um so when we started our Etsy you know we kind of had a bunch of things on there that were not um, they were all leather, um, but we didn't know what. And then um, when we put up the armor behind us, we were like, okay, which armor are we going to put? How are we going to say it? What, what's our goal? So we niched it down even further and we're going to say, okay, we're going to theme it elegant. We're going to theme it, um, you know, like kind of like angelic version or fantasy. fantasy, you know? So we're like, okay, we're going to theme it with this like high aspiration, high elf looking, um, fantasy world right and I did all the key terms that way after you know I watched I almost want to say all of your videos that you had up at that time <laughs> um I binge watched you like crazy um and then naturally I talked about you guys to Mark all the time so then he started watching you know everything that, <laughs> that would come along um and then I think because of that is why we were found because it although armor itself is not super competitive there is a lot out there Oh yeah. And now if you look up like high fantasy, um, even on our E rank, you'll see like we are we are top. And at that time, we were the only ones because it felt like nobody dared to try. All the armor was very like kind of like barbarian. It was very generic, which is funny right. to say because it's armor. Like, how do you make armor generic, right? And so we were like, no, 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 let's stay away from the generic, let's niche down, let's figure this out. Um, and we were the only ones and the first ones to have armor that was high fantasy related. Um, so we got to set the prices. On, we got on to Etsy set, at least. Uh, on Etsy. <laughs> we got to set the prices. We got to set the shipping time. We got to set all that. We followed your site files, um, which we didn't know who we were talking to. Not going to lie. For months, <laughs> we didn't know who we were talking to. So we followed the site files. We did this and that. And then... They, we ship their items and we go, wait a minute, this address looks familiar. Where is this address? Why is it so close to us? <laughs> we look them up, find out who they were, and they're like, oh my gosh, I hope we're doing this right. Then they came back to us and they got more of the same because they wanted more of the same due to COVID reasons and stuff. So the fact that they came back was awesome. And because of the customer service that we were able to provide, they gave us a shout out on Instagram they, and they have like, I don't even know how many. And then um, that gave us way more followers. Hi, camera. Um, that gave <laughs> us more followers on Instagram. Um, that also helped um, with our social media, you know, which which all kind of like helps each other, right? And it helped us build a community. 
So it's not just it's not just selling. You're helping us build this community, um, and it's amazing. Like we we have close to again we're still new, but we have close to three thousand followers on Instagram. We have a thousand oh, followers nice. on Twitch. We have close to eight thousand followers on TikTok. Which um, we're completely abandoned. Pretty much. I know <laughs> TikTok's been hard for us. Um, but a lot of that is coming from from the roots of it was from you guys, and I could never thank you guys enough for what you what you've done to the to the makers and crafters on Etsy and everywhere else. Um, so there there's my <laughs> there's my little rant for you guys. Um, <laughs> That's and, and I, you know what's great though because that that like that went over like four of the questions that I was going to ask you, which so means perfect. What, we were actually talking in the car. We went to go get coffee um, before this interview. And I was wondering, I guess, Mark, I guess I'm stealing your thunder because you were wondering if, if this, um, you know, especially with the pandemic and it interfering with Ren fairs, if it had any impact on your business at all, or if the timing was perfect with getting your feature on Lucifer and also having that, um, you know, demographic and tabletop gaming where people could still technically play. I know that like Amber Marie, she does everything with her D and D sessions. Um, she does them all virtual. Did you notice any impact from the pandemic with just the line of work that you're in? Um, I would say that. Like Doctor Masks became very, very popular. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That, that was a, that, that was a whole yes. meme in and of itself, right? Yeah, yeah. That that allowed us to buy so much new equipment for our shop. It was a lot of sewing. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of doing the same thing over and over again. But yeah, it it really kind of kickstarted our our business. Yeah. But that's a perfect example of who moved my cheese. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. Because we were so, we're going to do armor. We're going to do this. And then the pandemic happened. And we're like, how do we adjust? What do we do? It definitely became the moment of who moved my cheese? Where do we find it? And we're like, okay, the plague doctor seems to be doing good. What do we do, you know, to keep this going? Because this isn't going to be forever, right? Obviously, our plague doctor cells, um, cells have not been as high as they were during the pandemic. But it was a perfect example of that because we we adjusted to what we were doing um, and kept it going and they kept our business alive. And in fact, we we were able to upscale our business and got like this big sewing machine and we got the camera equipment from that and we got like a clicker press. And there's a lot of things that we were able to buy because we because we adapted. Um, I love that you bring that up, though, because we have a lot of alphas who they make money selling like maybe they have a breakthrough product that makes a bunch of money but then they don't take that money and invest it back into their mm -hmm. business and then that money runs out like for example all of the etsy sellers who jumped on etsy to sell masks but now mm -hmm. you know everybody has masks and mm -hmm. nobody's really buying masks anymore and they're just like oh, i don't know what to do and now the, and the algorithm knows them for masks right. so if they just yeah. stop selling right. the masks now they're but they then have a they blew all that money on things that didn't help them to actually grow a business. They went on vacations and things. So I, I'm really glad that you brought up the fact that you invested it back in. And yeah. I mean, I'm hoping that you guys can, can you, you said you were talking with more people kind of in TV. I'm hoping that you guys can scale that because fantasy, at least right now, is is huge. It's you know? big right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I really hope I can make the right connections as well <laughs> yeah I would, um, that'd be awesome they're about to do for um you know court of thorns and roses which he and i read the mm -hmm. entire series hulu's about to start casting for a court of thorns and roses series yeah. so i would be, I'd be with, calling up hulu and with popularity <laughs> from books and now you have halo making the tv show which is actually doing well i think no. you might see some more video game adaptations mm -hmm. and high fantasies every i mean you have the witcher uh yep. the elder scrolls the next elder scrolls comes out in the next three or four years i wouldn't doubt that they <laughs> would make a tv show on that too there's infinite you know information mm -hmm. to go off with that but yeah you're nerding out, aren't you? Well, yeah. They sell, they sell a nerdy product. This, Why wouldn't I? This is exactly what we do. This is like... Yeah. <laughs> we found our audience and our niche, and, yeah. we, and we, we grow and thrive on it, so that's okay. That's the culture. <laughs> and, and, and the whole, like, nerd culture, it's growing. It's, oh, it's yeah. Like, when we were kids, it was the bad thing to be the nerd, but now it's a bad thing not to be. Like, exactly. every, everybody's a bit of a dork now, right? So yes. it's, 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 it's the good way to be. 
Absolutely. And, yeah. And then that's, that's the next little niche that we were hitting is um, how to make products for the adult nerd. Yeah. For the, oh, yeah. For, the, for the adult nerd that doesn't want to have, you know, a colorful, maybe Hello Kitty anymore when you go to work. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. now, now you want something that says, I'm an adult, but I'm still a nerd. Um, so now we're looking into that that niche of like, okay, how do we further niche it down? Because our items are full grain leather. Um, so it's not necessarily the cheapest, but I remember it's easier to sell one $100 item than a hundred um, $1 items. Absolutely. That, that I remember from Starla. <laughs> and, that's, and that's why it's like, I, I never go based on sales volumes because a sticker shop that sells, you know, one to five dollar stickers that has 8,000 sales is less impressive to me than a shop like yours where everything is high end. Every single sale pays the bills. And I think that a lot of people are really afraid to charge that premium pricing. But especially now, you guys have so much authority I mean, you could probably raise your prices and people would still buy because what they yeah, want, they raise their price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they want what they want and they're going to pay to get it, especially when your products aren't, like you said, the generic things that everybody's offering right now. So, um, man, we we blew through this interview. Um, I guess the, the last major things that we've been asking everybody to share is if you were talking to somebody who was thinking about joining HAA and maybe they were super, you know, nervous or apprehensive to do so because it is a big commitment and it is a lot of time to go through a program like this. Um, what would you tell someone about your experience and what would you tell someone who is, who is nervous to take that step for their own business? Well, the first thing for me was that if you're serious about about growing on Etsy, then it's then it's a must. Um, there's so much in there that I've used, and you know what? Honestly, I haven't even finished the whole thing because we got Nobody busy. Has. <laughs> we got busy. We didn't even finish all of it. And my goal is this summer to go back and re at least rewatch it and have it in my brain. But do it. Try it. And you guys have the 30 day um, item. Like try try it at least. Um, Definitely for me, there was no, there, there's no doubt that it was the right choice. Um, we invest back in our business and education is one of them. And that's one of the things that Starla and Mark had taught us was investing in education, investing in your business is the way to go. Um, we we're able to grow because of it. Um, it helped me change my, my mentality on it. Um, as a whole, I'm the one that kind of runs a lot of the behind the scenes of business. And Mark does a lot of like the hands-on and the tools. So I was the one that I gave myself the job. How am I going to learn? Um, and at first I was scared because I am a teacher and I was scared that it was like, oh, you know, it's not a college course. It's not this and that. But you guys have the experience. You have, you know, you have the proof, you know, behind everything. Amazing. And it also felt like I was never lied to. Uh, everything that you've mentioned is, is helpful, is factual, Um and it incredibly just, it changed our lives, honestly. Um, so if you can do it, do it. But we didn't start off with that. Um, we did do all your free content where we got to the point where we're like, okay, now we can afford to purchase that. And we purchased it and there's absolutely no regret. Um, so I would tell everybody out there that's thinking about it, if you're ready for the stuff and if you're ready to, to grow yourself and your business, there's awesome. again, there's no regrets here. Yeah, we and that's that's what we we always tell everyone is that this is it is a huge step. And that's why we provide so much for free, because mm-hmm. once you if you were to apply all of the free things that we that we create, I feel like the expense of HAA is no longer, it's not supposed to feel like it hurts. If it feels like it hurts, 
then, you know, we would prefer that people feel comfortable making that choice. Because I think that when you go into it and you're actually ready and you're not just nervous the whole time and you feel prepared, those are the alphas who put in the most work and then they see those astronomical mm -hmm. results, especially like with what you're talking about, finding that target market, niching down. And now it sounds like you're even trying to hone in on that niche even more. Right. Which is ultimately, it's a never ending process. You're constantly mm -hmm. going to be niching down the more that you learn about the people who are actually buying your product. So yeah, it's not just appealing to people that like fantasy and stuff. You're trying to actually delve deeper and find yeah. who, who within that genre are the people that are actually going to buy the things that we make. You're, you're not selling to the casual, <laughs> like occasionally I turn on Game of Thrones. Right. You're You're <laughs> appealing to a very specific niche. So, um, well, I guess the last little bit would be if you have anything that you want to share with the alphas, anything inspiring, anything that you want them to take from your experiences or you know, anything that you've learned that you'd like to share. Oh, man. I think something that we're learning right now is how our small business is growing more than just a small business. We are building a community. And now I see myself like I... I see what you guys have done with your Facebook and everything. And we, we were like, okay, let's, let's try We have a business. Yes. But let's see what happens if we start to build a community and go off of that. And sure enough, we're, we're building this community and it's been amazing. So for other alphas that are ready to do that, go for it, try building a community in an area and, and see what happens. It's been incredibly fun. Um, this is uh, now starting to become his full-time business. Um, my part-time and we're hoping that in the future this is going to be both of our full-time business together a husband and wife team um, <laughs> again for geeks by geeks mm -hmm. and you know it's yeah like go, go the next step once you're once you've got the Etsy or you feel comfortable with Etsy and you feel comfortable with your business try to build that community Absolutely. because it, it helps so much as, as you as a business to grow and the things that you can pass on it makes you feel incredible. Um, when you teach others, like the way, like things that you've practiced and like, it, it helps you learn everything once more and then you're helping out other people. So, I mean, that's that's my advice for other alphas that have already been alphas and are ready to take the big step. That's awesome. That's And that's one of the things, I think we've, we've got it on a big plaque over on the wall that someone made for us. I always say that the role of a leader is to build more leaders. And then there are the, ty there are the types of leaders who sit on their golden throne and they look down on everybody and they want to maintain that like superiority over everyone below them. But that's not leadership to me. Leadership is when yeah. you actually are a, you are trying to build people up to be equal to you and that's what community building is all about especially you said that you do you do twitch you're active with um you know the communities who follow you on social media and i'm sure that they're looking at you wondering how the heck are they doing it how are they how are they doing this how are they able to keep up with all this and that's 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 the most rewarding thing <laughs> yes and I, I got my first fangirl moment the other day when i had them i sent a message out and i said hey if you need help with anything let me know you know i'll, I'll send you videos from starla to get you still going <laughs> um and then they they were like i can't believe you're talking to me and i was like it's just me like who, <laughs> who do you think i am <laughs> and I was like, oh okay like i see you on twitch and i see you on social media and i was like Oh, cool. <laughs> You're on TV. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 how we felt setting up the interviews because we had everyone there like, I'm so nervous. I'm like, don't worry. I am way more nervous than you are. So, all right, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out. You're our first, uh, you're our first couple. So this was a lot of fun. Alphas, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next Alpha interview. Bye.